Good afternoon. My name is Anne Marie Reynolds and I will be your host for today's webinar. Please let me know if the volume needs to be adjusted. Okay. Welcome to the eCorn webinar, 50 Ways You Know It's Time for a New Document Management System. I have with me Scott Brandt, President of eCorn. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And Kevin Moss, Director of Sales. Good afternoon, Kevin. Hey, thanks, Anne Marie. How's everybody doing? I hope everyone is seated in a comfortable chair and we'll get started. Thank you for um, joining us for the 50 Ways You Know It's Time for a New DMS. This, uh, uh, this is Scott Brandt. And we're going to uh, discuss some key elements of a document management system, DMS. And along the way, we're going to have a little fun. That's okay. And we're going to review some anecdotes, some we've heard and collected over the years, and some we just made up. <laughs> <laughs> For the serious amongst us, we'll uh, take some questions at the end. Just enter them in the uh, chat portion of your Join Me, which should be at the top of that screen. And if you haven't already, um, make your screen full screen. There's a little full screen icon on the lower right-hand corner of your screen. Uh, as a disclaimer, we're not here to pitch our DMS called ImageSight, but if you want some specific information, please contact us. Uh, we will give you contact information at the end of the webinar. So let's go. Let's talk security. All right, you consider a padlock on your desk document security. Really? Is this security? You know, then you know it's time for a new document management system. An employee says he lost his iPad and he thinks he had company documents on it. This one we've actually heard often. You know, now it's time for a new document management system. Your president gave a consultant a link to his box account and now they have all your compensation data. This is actually a real story we heard. The president didn't realize that the file, the link he gave was linked back to a file in his PC. And then you know it's time for a new document management system. So some items on security. Regardless of how files are accessed, all files should be permissioned by user, group, and application and with logins using the corporate domain authentication. So what we say here is security needs to be as granular as possible down to the file level. System functionality and files should not even be displayed for non-permissioned users. Don't even give people a chance to make a mistake. And the system should have the ability to simply access to file, deny access to files on the server, and wipe any files downloaded to mobile devices. Okay. As more mobile devices are being used uh, that aren't corporate assets, we need the ability to wipe these devices and ensure corporate files are kept secure. You receive a call from an employee who tried uploading a file while at Starbucks, and he thinks someone intercepted it. Does this ever actually really happen? This is Scott? a real story, Kevin. Okay. The employee was freaking out. I'm sure. Okay, say it with me. Time, Time for, for a new, new document, document management, management system. system. All right, we'll, we'll stop saying that, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we swear. All right. All right. Someone opened up your file in China. Wait, you don't have an officer in China. Oh, no. What do you do? Oh, yeah, you punt is what you do. <laughs> uh, sure. This actually happened. IT found that they had a Bloomberg subscription report that was opened by over 1,000 people in China. Just imagine if that file was your price list or a part specification. 
your DMS does not provide a complete audit trail, and many just do not. So security, more on security. By earmarking a file, those files that are downloaded and no longer controlled by the DMS can still report back if used in an unauthorized manner. So we find earmarking is a great security tool. Ensure that the files downloaded to mobile devices are sent via SSL and then encrypted on the device while at rest. These are the ways we use to secure files and prevent intrusion. And every action taken by a user, whether file related or event related, should be tracked and reportable for audit purposes. And this is really just a minimum requirement these days for document management solutions. So great, uh, Scott, it's great information. Why don't you tell us how you handle uh, version control? Glad you asked, Kevin. No problem. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you can't tell which revision is the latest. Not an unusual occurrence. Production is using old versions of product specs. One of our customers, anecdotally here again, one of our customers reproduced an entire piece of equipment to a wrong spec and shipped it to the customer. I just really wonder how often this stuff happens. And you just updated a document. Now the boss wants to go back to a previous document and you didn't save a copy. That sounds like a total disaster. Oh, <laughs> man. Has this ever happened to you? Of course. Wow. Sure it's happened to all of us. Yep. So version control. Version control is a minimum requirement in today's iteration-centric world. What we mean here is we have many versions of documents, drawings, and specifications that we need to manage. Versioning should be configurable, but more importantly, seamless to the user. So it's, it should, it's no longer the responsibility of users to rename, revision, or change documents through the Save As function. You typically email a file to everyone in the department so you can get everyone on the same page. Great. All right, everyone now has the file, but who's got the right version? Okay, so sometimes it just seems like we're playing musical chairs with our files. You have multiple files on the server with the exact same name. Right, you'd be surprised how often this happens, especially with customers who are using box cloud providers these days. All right. So on version control, the most current version of a document should be easily identifiable. This is just DMS 101. Documents with the same name should be allowed using versions as a means to identify the correct file. So we can allow this to occur, files with the same name, but we need to control for it, and we do that through version control. And major and minor versioning for project-oriented files like design files. So where files where not every change is a major version change, we need to be able to keep both large and small changes through versioning. It's been weeks since you asked IT to restore a version of a file from your backup. And if I had a nickel for every time this happened before I got here to eQuorum, I'd have a couple of nickels. I'd be a rich man. Yeah. Well, more than a couple of nickels. Sure. <laughs> a customer orders a part for a product they purchased five years ago, and you can't determine what component you were using then. This is actually a real pain point of a recent customer of our bars. More on version control. So back revs should be available to help in research and backtracking. 
revision comparison allows changes to be easily identified, especially for drawings. Having the versions is often just not enough. We sometimes need to see the actual changes from version to version. The system should allow automatic archiving of all the versions. This is just a key function of any good DMS these days. An appropriate uh, quote here from our old uh, pal Dilbert says, and bring me a hard copy of the internet so I can do some serious surfing. So let's do some surfing, or what we call search. Yes. Okay. And what is the story with this guy's hair and the race? <laughs> <laughs> nice hair. Yeah, nice hair. Uh, you can't find last year's contract. So especially finance, always looking for those old year contracts. It takes you longer to find, attach, and email a file than if you walk the hard copy over to the recipient. Does that happen to any of you? Sure. Very frustrating. Absolutely. And you can't remember what you named the file. Uh, how often are you searching to find the file because you can't remember the name of the file? Or you grow a beard while waiting for Windows to search for a keyword on the network share. That looks like the beard. That looks like my beard, Amory. <laughs> Does this happen to you? I think yours would be you a little grayer. Beard? Beard? Not you, not like yours would have a little more gray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, most, yeah. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. yeah. No more beard growing. I still has bad hair though. <laughs> search. So I'm searching, you know, searching for a document or drawing or file is all about speed. And adding metadata or what we call attributes speeds these searches. So adding met metadata should be really easy for users. Full text and heuristic searches help find either misnamed files or those with no metadata. You know, technology can really help on these harder type searches these days. Your document word search is a yellow highlighter. Yellow highlighter? Yeah. Anyone use a pink highlighter out there? I used to have like 20, sure. Kevin, I used to have like 20 highlighters on my desk, each a different color. I'm with you. Now, no more highlighters. Thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Do you lose files because someone else moved them? Also, Someone moved your cheese. Moved your cheese? This happens all the time. And we tell the customers it's probably the mouse. Oh, God, you had to go there. <laughs> That's so cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, gooded there. <laughs> oh, even worse. <laughs> Search. Searching needs to be configurable as everyone searches differently. And favorites are a must as most searches are recurring. So these are actually key strengths of the Equorum DMS image site. It's easier to recreate a CAD file than search for it. Okay, admit it out there, guys. You've done this or you've seen this happen. It's terrible, but it does happen. You can't determine what other products a specific part is used in, so you're searching through all your files. Very frustrating. New hires can't find data to do the jobs they're taking over. So missing files or misnamed files can really create havoc, especially for new employees who are taking over other people's responsibilities. Search. So visual searching of drawings is a quick and effective approach. Our eyes are great identifiers, and ImageSight provides great thumbnails of drawings, so any good DMS should do the same. Boolean operators like AND and OR and other operators help identify files that meet multiple search criteria.
Let's talk access and ease of use. A non-engineering person needs a CAD license to view a file. It happens all the time, mostly in manufacturing companies. You want to collaborate on a project, but all you have is a printout. A note in this uh, graphic that everyone has a laptop. And a hard hat, apparently. Uh, they must be building something. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. I guess. Yeah. Something's going on. You, take your, you can take your hard hat off now. <laughs> <laughs> better keep it on in here. Yeah. <laughs> Incoming. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Engineering just purchased 10 additional CAD licenses for non-engineering employees. I mean, this just, why would you pay for these expensive licenses for people who really don't need the software? Doesn't seem to make any sense to me. You received an email with a document you thought no one else had access to. Uh, to tell me this hasn't happened to you. You know, when this happens, I almost feel violated when I get these types of files. It's happened to me, Scott. Yeah. A lot of stuff's happened to you, huh? <laughs> Let's keep that quiet, please. <laughs> As you can tell, we have fun here at eQuorum. <laughs> A single viewer system allows viewing of all file types without needing, a multiple, without needing multiple applications on the computer. So only pay for those expensive licenses for the people who really need them. While providing easy access to files, the system must ensure the highest level of security, down to the file and the function level. And providing easy access to digital files, drawings, makes collaborating on projects easier. So digital files enable the review and approval process for things like design changes, document markup, redlining. These things are much harder to do when you're using paper. You need to use digital files. You don't have mobile access to your documents. Shame on you. This is my pet peeve. All right, you need to get access in today's mobile world. The guys in the field just called and asked you to run out drawings to them because their laptops lost their connection. So this actually happened at a university while we were in the middle of one of our meetings. Everybody just had to grab some drawings and run to the field. You have a DMS, but no one uses it. Well, yeah, there's certainly there's a lot of shelfware out there. That's because these systems are cumbersome to implement and just too complicated for users. You don't know what a DMS is. If you have one, or if you are maximizing its usefulness. Okay, come on. You, you, you don't know if you have a system? Really? So let's talk access and ease of use. Mobile access to files from any location is a must in today's multi-location home working environment. Whether or not you're using a laptop, an iPhone, an iPad, or any other device. And mobile access should not be tied to internet access or the need to download yet one more app. eQuorum is appless. Yeah, some, mm -hmm. call it, some call us clueless, <laughs> but, no, but we are appless. No apps to download. Just use your browser. If the search, find, view, and distribute functions are not easy and intuitive, users just won't use the system. Underscore intuitive. IT is responsible for implementing and communicating the benefits of a modern-day document management system. Now, though there certainly there are internal champions, and some of you guys out there are those, ultimately IT has to take the lead. So we need to convince IT the efficacy of these systems and help us lead the charge. And the best DMSs are the ones users don't even know they're using. So users 
will use intuitive systems, especially the ones that don't really appear to change very much. Talk document retention. If you're afraid to delete any files because your DMS doesn't support archiving or end of cycle. Okay, let's, let's all be brave souls out there and not fear the delete key. Outlook's auto archive automatically deleted an email with important customer contact info. This actually happened to one of our guys here. And lucky he had his emails backed up easily. He was able to go get it off our system. A new regulations say you need to retain certain documents for five years and maintain a record of when they were deleted. And it just seems like more and more compliance regulations every day. So some thoughts on document retention. Documents should be archived, retained, deleted automatically based on type of document, age, or other metadata. And this should be easy and seamless. Users should not be responsible for doing this. An audit trail documenting a file's history, including who, what, and when, is a must for any business. Now, tracking every file and its history can be a lifesaver these days. We'll talk about e-discovery systems here in a, little, in a little bit. You just received another requisition for more disk storage. A lot of disks. Oh, that, that graphic is just plain ugly. That's brutal. Oh. You hate calling the off-site storage facility to pull records from five years ago. All right, so raise your hand if you had to do this one. You know, why are we archiving if it's so difficult to find the paper years later? So that's why I wanted that piece of paper from the third shelf. How long would that take? <laughs> uh, well, unless you could tell me the box it was specifically in and we could go retrieve it, it would take a while. And you would be going through a box full of papers. <laughs> So, document retention, let's see, IT needs to control where files are stored, who has access, and when files should be deleted or archived. Again, this should just be IT's responsibility, and if you're IT out there, you know what we're talking about. Actively managing corporate files versus file shares can drastically reduce total file storage requirements and the just general confusion about files. So ultimately, we get to save money and it makes you a popular guy or girl around the office. Employees are using a box provider to store their files. Right, this is every IT department's current nightmare, mainly because of a lack of control and file discipline when users use these box systems. Your existing DMS is keeping you from joining the 21st century, but you're still a slave to disco. Oh, man. <laughs> Who's that over there? That's uh, John Travolta? Yeah, John. Ah, come, come here. Yeah, come dance over here, John. Come on. All right. <laughs> Night fever. <Yeah. laughs> disco, disco. Yeah. All right. So on the document retention side, you know, box providers are great for family pictures, but corporate files, especially intellectual property, should be managed by a commercial-grade DMS. All right. Box providers don't provide the security, version control, file location discipline that corporations require. Just plain and simple. E-discovery systems demand a greater level of management over emails and other corporate communication files. So the lawyers e-discovery systems are incredibly demanding and it can be very painful if your DMS doesn't provide adequate historical files and audit information. And try meeting these e-discovery requirements if you don't have a DMS. Whew. 
Nightmare. Nightmare. All right, let's talk about reducing errors and increasing productivity. Productivity. <laughs> you carry too many redundant parts. And we've heard this because it's easy to do if you have multiple uncontrolled versions of drawings and specifications. You over-machined a part based on an old revision. You know, I remember hearing about this one. You know, I'm not sure, but I really think this got somebody fired. Your project is behind because a key approver is sick. It's again a true story. No one knew she was sick, and the project approval sat for weeks. So on reducing errors, increasing increasing productivity. You know, not assuring the most, com most current released version of a document or drawing is used invariably leads to errors in production and process. Okay, a DMS provides you with this assurance. You know, review and approval processes can be automated with workflow management solutions, increasing both business velocity and productivity. So, uh, Scott, do you have a workflow uh, solution for uh, your product image site? Of course we do, Kevin. Why are you asking? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Yeah, we, any good workflow solution will take processes that are document-centric and give you the ability to manage them and improve your productivity. Not assuring part files are unique leads to overstockage and obsoles obsolescent inventory. DMSs make sure files are unique, not duplicative. An employee leaves, and you have no idea what projects they were working on. This is never a good situation. Someone just overwrote a document you spent three days updating. All right, you, you can almost hear the primal screams right now. Don't let this happen to you and your beloved files. You need a way to make sure that the document was reviewed and approved. All right, so the old days of physical routers all behind us, we need to review and approve digitally. General access security and audit functionality reduce overall silly business errors. So many errors occur from lack of oversight and human error, but we have the technology. Providing IT with information about file usage allows for more efficient and effective file management for the corporation. So we, you know, we've worked with companies with as few as a couple tens of thousands of files, up to millions of documents. And all these companies have benefited from the structure and security of a DMS. Oh. Oh, there's my dog, Duke. Yeah. Yeah. Your hard disk crashed, and your dog ate the only printout. Oh, no. What do we do? Uh -huh. I think that's that's my dog, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Sounds like Duke. Yeah, Duke. There are more Dropbox accounts than you have employees. Another real story. This company had 500 employees, and when IT finally went and investigated, they found they had three terabytes worth of files in unknown, uncontrolled Dropbox accounts. So in reducing errors and increasing productivity, you know, file backups can be accomplished in many ways, but when files get outside the corporate file share, there are no guarantees IT can recreate the files. That's the old expression. Keep your friends close and your files closer. <laughs> Make sure you have quick access to backed up files, including back revisions, 
should your computer crash or you accidentally overwrite a cloud-based file. You know, backups aren't really useful if you can't get to them quickly. Going paperless. All right, Kevin, this is your favorite. It is. Yeah. Paper is definitely our nemesis here. Yeah. Let's get rid of all paper. All paper. Save the trees. Every morning, the office looks like a pipe fitters convention as everyone searches through rolls of, paper, of drawings. We had the uh, unfortunate experience of being in the facilities management department at a major university at 7 o'clock a.m. one morning. It was a nightmare. People rummaging through files like weasels. <laughs> You're tired of carrying reams of paper through six feet of snow, up a hill, ten flights of stairs, and your bare feet. I hate when that happens. Yeah. You know, the kids just don't know how good they have it these days, right? Right. They have shoes and everything. <laughs> a salesperson called for the most recent drawing, and you had to fax it to him. Fax? Yeah. I'm sure this happens more than we think, and I'm almost embarrassed to think that you know, people still do this. No fax machines still existed. Oh, uh, yeah. You're sitting on a transfile box because you can't get to your desk. And calling all CFOs, calling all CFOs, get yourself a DMS. It doesn't look comfortable. No, it's not. No. <laughs> Try writing on one. <laughs> so, going paperless. You know, paper is so yesterday, paper is so expensive, you know, paper is so environmentally not cool. So going paperless makes sense for numerous reasons. Couldn't say that better myself because I just did. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. So we're going to take a second out here and catch our breath and see if there's any questions out there that people have submitted while we were talking, because we can talk. Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. So. First question from yeah. Michael. We currently have a document management system we're not happy with. Can you move the files into your system? Yeah. This is something that we pride ourselves in, in terms of being able to migrate files from old solutions into our solutions. We have some pretty nifty utilities and some pretty smart guys who do this. Okay, next question from Steve. How long does it take to install or implement a document management system? Um, good question. Um, it depends upon the size of the solution, how many users, how many documents we're migrating. Uh, but we're talking days, maybe uh, a week or two. We're not talking months and or years like some other people quote these days. Okay, let's see. Oops. Okay, we have a question. What are the hardware requirements? Uh, basic hardware requirements are we are uh, web-based, so we need a web server. Windows-based with a Windows OS. Uh, we play well either with Oracle or with SQL Server for our database server. And just standard SSL services into the web server is what we require. So we're actually uh, running out of time, so we are going to move on here. Uh, please contact us if you want a demo. Uh, you can contact Kevin Moss. That's his phone number there. Feel free, uh, anyone out there that um, has any questions um, or would uh, like some additional information, possibly to set up an online demonstration where we could actually show you what the product looks like. Um, feel free to uh, give me a call, um, reach out, uh, email, whatever you feel like doing, and uh, we'd be more than happy to um, show you um, image site and see if it's a good fit for your document management needs. And, and Kevin, that's that, that email, info, info at eQuorum.com, that's, that's you, right? We yeah, that'll work, or Kevin.Moss at eQuorum.com, yeah, either we, one. We, we call him Mr. Info. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but we do appreciate everyone's time today. 
Thank you again for attending 50 Ways You Know It's Time for a Document Management System. I will be providing a link to the recorded webinar uh, for all registered attendees. Again, thank you so much and everyone have a great day. Thank you.